Ethernet and IEC 61850, no longer a problem with CProtec 4 devices, version 4.6 and higher, and the current Dixie 4. In order to ease you quickly into the subject, we are going to show you an easy way of checking communications. We are assuming a configuration with three devices connected over Ethernet. If there are more than two users, you need a so-called switch. This is an intelligent data distributor, which also lets you integrate your PC with Dixie 4 in the communication. The communication check begins by pressing the F1 key on device 1. The fact that LED 1 lights up on the same device confirms that it has been pressed. What's decisive, however, is that an indication is sent to the two other devices at the same time. An LED at each of the two devices respectively should then signal that they have received the indication. Pressing the F2 key on device 1 then deletes the indication and resets the LEDs on all devices. First, we need a project with three Ciprotec 4 devices that are suitable for communication over Ethernet and IEC 61850. As you've already done with all previous devices, simply select them from the device catalog and drag and drop them onto your project. For our example, we're going to select a 7SJ633 version 4.6. Similarly, the procedure for entering the order designation is basically the same. It's essential to ensure that you enter the correct system interface. To do this, select the setting Additional Protocols. This opens a dialog for additional data. In the top list box, select the setting Protocol. In the bottom list box, select IEC 61850 in the required interface variant. Close all dialog boxes and give the inserted device a name, for example, Device 1. Now follow the same procedure as before and insert two further devices in the project. As well as their name within the Dixie project, each of the three devices also needs an IED name. This name will be used later to identify the user within the network. Dixie Manager automatically specifies a unique name, which you can check in the properties of the devices or, of course, assign your own name of up to eight letters or numbers. Of course, you can also use devices that use other protocols for communication in the same project and, therefore, in the same system. Using the pop-up menu, you can also insert the so-called IEC 61850 station quickly and easily in the project. This type of station comprises several devices that can communicate with each other over Ethernet according to IEC 61850, which is exactly what we want to show in our example. You can determine the specific devices you want to participate in the communication in the Properties dialog of the station. This dialog shows you all the devices available as potential users. It takes just a few mouse clicks to assign these to the station. The station element is your access to information on network connections and the data links between the various users. In the course of this topic, we will be showing you how to edit this information with the system configurator. The aforementioned method of checking the communication requires the exchange of indications between the participating devices. Separately for each device, you define which indications are affected, what trips them, and where they are sent, using the Dixie configuration matrix. We will show you how to do this again using our example Device 1. First, open the device by double-clicking the symbol in Dixie Manager. In the dialog, make sure that the Offline option is checkmarked. Then click OK. This starts the Dixie Device Editor. Click Masking I.O. to open the configuration matrix. First create a new information group. By grouping together all the indications that are required for communication, you will make them more clearly manageable. As with all other names in our example, you can assign a name of your choice to the group. However, for our information group here, we suggest you use COMTEST. Drag the relevant indication type for the required indications from the information catalog and drop it onto the group button 
and give this newly created information a name. Now let's take a look at which indications are required for which device and how you need to route them. As soon as the F1 key on device 1 is pressed, we want an indication which we have called test signal to be transmitted over the system interface. We are also routing this as an unlatched indication to LED 1. This means that the LED lights up, but only for as long as the indication is actually pending. Our requirement is that once F1 is pressed, the indication is permanently pending until the F2 key is pressed. In this case, a simple CFC function will help us. This will need to be configured in the course of this example. However, to prepare for this, we'll now insert two internal single indications in the COM test group and call them F1 on and F2 off. These two indications serve as input signals for the CFC function and are generated as soon as the respective function key is pressed. The result of the CFC function then decides the state of the indication test signal, meaning whether this indication is pending or not. The devices 2 and 3 receive the indication, also over the system interface of course. Now also route the unlatched indication to LED1 for both these devices. Oh, and another tip on the different types of single indications. Please note that the information type internal single point indication is required for the indications F1 on and F2 off in device 1. For the indication test signal in the same device, you need to use the information type single point indication. However, the indication required in devices 2 and 3 is the type external single point indication. You have now almost finished the preparations for each individual user. You will be linking this information between the users later using the Digzy system configurator. As this communication level is accessed by the functions model according to IEC 61850, all the Ciprotec indications routed to the system interface must be assigned to a corresponding IEC 61850 data object. To help you, Dixie 4 automatically opens a properties dialog as soon as you route information to the system interface. This dialog offers you an object that is already in the form of a complete path. You only have to specify the prefix. We recommend entering the same prefix for all users. While this is not mandatory, it tends to make things much clearer and more manageable. In our example, we have chosen the prefix CTEST. Now save your entries and close the matrix. In order to ensure that pressing the F1 or F2 keys delivers a permanent on or off state, you now need to create a simple CFC function for device 1. We have already shown you the basics for working with a CFC editor. For this reason, we will only be showing you at this point which information you need to link in special cases. We can achieve this requirement using an RS flip-flop type block. Link the set input of the flip-flop with the information F1 on. Whereas the reset input is linked to the information F2 off. This function is then completed by linking the output of the flip-flop and the indication test signal. Pressing the F1 key now causes the indication to be pending and pressing the F2 key resets it. Compile the function and close the CFC editor. Once you've stored all items of information, close the Dixie device editor and return to Dixie Manager. Here you can now start the Dixie system configurator. As usual, this can be done by simply double-clicking. When the IEC 61850 station is opened, you don't need to do anything further with regard to network structure. All three devices are already assigned to a subnetwork and have unique IP addresses. The devices are also easy to identify due to their Dixie 4 project names, which are shown as well as their IEC 61850 specific names. If you would like further details, please refer to the Properties window. This immediately provides the relevant information depending on the selected element. Now, switch to the Link area. 
For our example, assign the Goose application, available as standard, the name Communication Test. Now select Source and Destination Objects for this application. These objects contain the information that you previously specified in the configuration matrix and have routed to the system interface. When looking for them, you can use these two clues. The prefix CTEST, which we assign to each object in the device matrix, and the CProtect specific display text of the indication, which is also displayed. The indication test signal is to be sent from device 1 to devices 2 and 3. You first need to select the data object SPCS01 for the user device 1. By clicking the Add Source button, the object is inserted in the Source column of the Interconnections window. Now select one after the other, the destination objects for this interconnection. In this case, that would be SPCS01 of both Device 2 and Device 3 and add these to the interconnections list. This is done by either double-clicking the data object or by simply dragging and dropping them to the relevant cell. This example also demonstrates very nicely that it's possible to assign several destination objects to a single source object. Now close the system configurator. A plausibility check is automatically carried out on your entries, which are then stored. Now update the parameter sets of the individual station users in Digsy Manager. Now transmit the updated parameter sets to the three devices one after the other, and you are now completely ready for the communication test.